and we're live. Welcome, everybody. It's day four of Advent of Code. Um, rocking the Christmas hat again. You can see I put on some RGB lights in the background. Hopefully that's good. Um, I'm also feeling a bit less sick, so hopefully it should be more energetic, more fun. Um, so let me just get into my coding environment again and see what today has to offer. Um, open my IPA file. Right, so let's see if Eric's going to be nice to us today or isn't. Let's go in three, two, one. Okay, that's part one done. Man, that was that was good. That was easy though, to be fair. Like I did that pretty fast. Um, yeah, man, I, I really should be waking up at 5 a.m. Because I could have racked up a ton of global leader points by now. Oh, well, that was good. Um, strangely easy, so I'm scared to see what part two has to offer. Um, but let's move on to that. Let me just copy my files across. And I'll see you back after the time lapse again. Okay, that's part two done. Yeah, I did that fast. Man, I was fast today. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm pumped. That was awesome. Um, really nice. Anyway, yeah, let's just go um, look at the, the challenges then. Um, first off, the other calendar. Look at that. That's quite nice. See more colors, see more shapes. Can't wait to see what it's going to end up like. Man, I really need to show you the other calendar for 2020. That was mad, like, what this tornado thing, tornado thing in there. Yeah. I like the sea monster, yeah, I want something like this this year. Really nice. Anyway, let's go back to 2022. Uh, day four. Oops. Day four. Day four, camp cleanup. Space needs to be cleared before the last supplies can be unloaded from the ships. And so several elves have been assigned to the job of cleaning up sections of the camp. Every section has a unique ID number, and each elf is assigned a range of section IDs. Eric is milking these elves this, this Christmas. They don't seem to be doing a good job. Um, programmer never learns from his mistakes, trust me. However, as some of the elves compare their section assignments with each other, they've noticed that many of the assignments overlap. To try to quickly find overlaps and reduce duplicated effort, the elves pair up and make a big list of the section assignments for each pair. Your puzzle input. For example, considering the following list, blah blah blah, that's an example. Um, more examples, don't need to go through that. Some of the pairs have noticed that one of their assignments fully contains the other. Um, for example, 2-8 fully contains 3-7, and 6-6 six, six is fully contained by 4-6. In pairs where one assignment fully contains the other, one elf in the pair will be exclusively cleaning sessions their partner will already be cleaning. So these seem like the most in need of reconsideration. In this example, there are two such pairs. In how many assignment pairs does one range fully contain the other? Yeah, so when I was going through this, kind of like yesterday, you can't, you can't just like skip to the end and hope you get enough information. Thankfully though, the puzzle statement today is pretty small. Like there's not that much story or that much like junk in it. Um, so after reading this, to be honest, if you're fast enough, you can probably quickly glance at the input and figure out what it meant. I did think of that. So I had to just skim read some of this. Um, just like double read one of these, just to make sure I'm on the right lines. And once I knew I was on the right lines, I started coding. I probably did have to ensure I was on the right lines, but at least I was dead set on so knew what I was going to do. Um, no guessing, which is good. So let's see what I did. Um, Vim day 4a.py. Zoom in view again. Put that bit bigger. Right, so classic opening the file, setting the T, then go through everything in the file, you do these instructions. Now, what we want to do is we want to split the elves up. Each line has two elves, split them up, so. Elf A, Elf A and Elf B, 
then they're split into their ranges. Um, a and B are still these strings, like that's A for example, that's not what we want. They're useless, we need integers. So we just do through together quick list comprehension to turn that string into the integers which are the bounds or the section bounds for the L's. So double A and triple A, gotta love my name you guys, but double A, triple A. Um, those are just the integers for the lower and upper bounds respectively. Same for B, double B and triple B. Um, they are just the lower and upper bounds for, for LB. Yeah, I mean, I copy, copy pasted this line uh, nice and quick. Gotta, gotta save it, gotta save it some time. Right, so now the actual logic behind it, the maths. I mean, I say maths, but not really maths. Um, you're just checking if one range fully encompasses the other. And you just have to do that twice. Because um, it could be A encompassing B or B encompassing A. And so you just check if the... Okay, this might be a bit hard to explain. But I think once you get it, it's really easy to get. And I think this is why I managed to do it so fast. Because I, I got this idea really quickly. And then it was just a matter of coding it in. Right, so... If you have bounds, for example, um, actually, wait. Let me just get my let me just get like a drawing thing up. I'm not gonna spend time trying to make this up. Um, yeah, see you in a few seconds. Right, sorry about that. I'm back again though, um, and this time I've got my my pen in hand, ready to show you what I meant by my solution. Right, so let's just draw a number line so we can visualize the the things. Let's call green Elfe. I'm sure Elfe loves this green. And let's say these are the bounds for, for elf A. And let's call elf B. Let's make that red. I'm sure elf B would love some red. So now what we want to check. Let's say let's say B is here for example. And so what we want to check is. Is A entirely encompassed by B? So on this number line I'm sure you guys can see. Yes it is. But how does a computer know that? And what you do is you check. Is B's lower bound smaller than or equal to. A's lower bound. So you check that. You also have to check if B's upper bound is greater than or equal to A's upper bound. And so what you're essentially doing, you're checking if A is in any of this region, or if A is in any, of, sorry, if B is any of this region, or if B is any of this region. Um, and so you're kind of like saying, using the bounds of A, which are these, you're saying, you're asking, are the bounds of B somewhere in these arrows and if it is then A must be entirely compassed by B and obviously in this case it's inclusive so it's greater than or equal to which is something I had to look at the example to figure out um, wait I had to look yeah I had to look right down here to figure that out because I wasn't too sure you probably saw me in the recording glancing back down there to figure this out but once you figure that out you can be certain this would work and again you just want to reverse the roles because what if a is the one encompassing B. So you just switch around the colours. Let's do that real quick. And now this should just work. So if you do this for both A and B on each other, um, you get this code, this single line of statement. The first one is checking if A encompasses B, and the second one is checking if B encompasses A. And if like either of these entire statements are true, then you want to add one to, to your total. Um, and just print your total at the end. Um, so you see with these comparisons, this is the one checking the low, lower bound, and this is the one checking the upper bound. Similar idea for, for B over here. Yeah, but that was it for part one. Really nice and quick. Love that. Thinking smart, thinking fast, writing code fast. Always, always nice. Right, let's go on to part two. Part two. It seems like there is still quite a bit of duplicate work planned. Instead, the elves would like to know the number of pairs that overlap at all. In the above example, the first two pairs, blah blah blah, don't overlap, while the remaining fours do. So examples. Um, so the question is, in how many assignment pairs do the ranges overlap? Yeah, so get Eric here just making our lives harder for no real reason but to <laughs> give us more coding challenges, I guess. Um, yeah, so this was a pretty short part two to read. So I kind of just read all of it. Um, I, mean, I read this last statement, which was good enough to be fair. I don't know why I bothered skim reading the rest of it, but I did it fast enough. So let's go look at my solution. 
Right, here it is. Another pretty basic one. Similar code as before. Um, the only real difference is the if statement. I mean, I just chucked this on one line this time. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that the first time. I love one line if statements. But yeah, that's my one line if statement. And this time, what I need to do, you probably saw in the recording, it took me a bit longer. I was thinking about it, I'm trying to think of the fast way to do it. Um, and this is the method I settled up with. Take a good look at that and we'll go um, go ahead and explain it. Right. So, this time we're looking for any overlap. And so that means at least one part of elf A has to be in any sort of part B, into any, in any part of elf A. Let's just rename our L's so it's nice and clear. Those are the new names. Um, so let's say, let's draw a number line again, just to make this even clearer. Right, so let's say those are the bounds of Elf A. Now say these are the bounds of Elf B. So now what you want to check is, is the lower bound of Elf B somewhere within this region? Because if the lower bound of, part of Elf B is somewhere in that region, then you're confident that B shares at least one value with A. And that's all you need to know. You don't need to know how many values, which values, blah, blah, blah. You just need to know if it does. And that's what makes this problem awesome. Because you can think a bit, you can think about all you actually need to know and isolate what you need to know um, from what you can know. Like, I can know so much more about this problem, but I don't need to. That's not what the question asks. And so that's what I'm looking for here. Um, just if any part of B, any part of the lower region of B is in there, or frankly, if any part of, let's say, the high region of B is in there. Because if any bound of B is within both of the bounds of A, then, you're, then you can be confident um, it's going to overlap. It might take a while to get your head around that, but I think that's the fast algorithm to spot here. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's what I've done here. I checked if, I kind of did the other way around to be fair, I checked if the low bound of elf A is within the bounds of elf B, and then I checked if the low bound of elf B is within the bounds of elf A. So again this time I just did the same, like, I just did this, um, and repeated it for both elf A and B, but I guess another solution would be the one I showed you, um, which would be this one, just checking both parts of, of one elf as opposed to checking one part of both elves. I mean, both work fine. Um, pretty simple modification for part two. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy how that went, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, now let's move on to the leaderboard. After admiring my, my two lovely new gold stars. <laughs> Bringing me up to eight. Nice. The leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, these scores. Yeah, these people, they're, they're, they're good. Oh, this guy's a bit low. Although he'll definitely catch up as the days get harder because you start filtering out people who are fast but not great at programming like me. <laughs> and then you then get replaced with only the people who can actually program really well. Anyway, let's check out the stats for today. Part 1. 16 seconds, man. What are these people doing? <laughs> 16 seconds. Again, I guess though. I guess this would be pretty easy to automate and then find a really smart tactic to do fast. But yeah, I mean, he's got to 212, which is still quite fast to be honest. Part 2, start off at 1 minute 30. Oh my god, it goes all the way up to 320. That's quite, that's quite a long time actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why this is so much longer than part 1. Yeah, I mean, still some crazy times though, like these, these guys, they're good. Um, let's check out the stats. 75,000 have done, have done day 4. Yeah, I think that's a lot, I think. I think Eric is keeping the difficulty low so far, so it's really accessible to more people. Um, which is obviously great, it's more people into programming, more people in the ASC community, more people having fun. That's what it's all about, and the build up to, to Christmas. But yeah, he's got over 100,000 people to do all of days 1 to 3. That's awesome. I think day 4 will follow suit soon as well. That, that's, that's good. Finally, let's check out the private leaderboard. Oh, anonymous. He's, he's building up his lead. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I know Dr. Danish. He's he's fast at programming. He's good and he's fast. 
He's not ultra fast, but he's fast enough to be like a threat. Because I remember last year. Afinav still hasn't managed to catch up, which is quite funny. Uh, still behind everyone else. Yeah. I'm still down here, 43rd. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that. 44 people have done all 8 stars. I like that. That's good. Right, let's look at these stats. Oh, Mr. Baker, did he wake up today? Nice. Got some good, got, got, got good positions. And Dr. Danish. And of course, Anonymous stole them both. <laughs> but yeah, teachers are in it now, yeah. Look at these Delta times. Yeah, these are some fast Delta times. Oh my god, Mr. Quilt. 44 seconds. That was a bit longer. I don't know what, what it'd be like if you subtract time I spent talking, but these are some good times. Yeah. Nice. I think, yeah, a lot of these people, they're pretty smart. So they managed to figure out how you modify your code for a really fast part two. Let's just see people who woke up early. Danish. Six, seven minutes. That's, that's good. Oh, <laughs> it almost dropped out. But yeah, these, these are good times. I don't know what I, mean, I was up to though. <laughs> That's not good. Um, I think he woke up late to be fair. Anyway, yeah. That's it for day 4, Advent of Codes 2022. It was a great day. Hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you had a great weekend. And see you tomorrow for day 5. Hopefully it doesn't get too hard. But enjoy your day. Goodbye.